Hello, my name is Heiko Rupp. I'm a developer on RHQ JBoss on Jopper project here at, at Red Hat. RHQ is an open source management platform, a base platform, which is sponsored by um, Red Hat that enables you to build your management solutions on top of that. For example, JBoss on the JBoss operations network was built on top of RHQ using parts of the RHQ project. But RHQ is not limited to JBoss or Red Hat projects at all or products to manage them. You can manage and monitor whatever you want. I have, for example, in the past written a plugin to monitor a thermometer chip or Twitter feeds and things like that. So you can really use it for whatever you want. We even have customers that are doing their complete own solution that we don't really know about. Um, in this talk, I will first show you a, a few slides about the architecture of RHQ so that you get the basics. And then I'm going into the talking about resources, what are managed resources, or what does RHQ understand at managed resources. And then I'm going into live demo coding of a plugin to show you how you can use RHQ to monitor and manage your own um, solutions and resources and whatever. So on this first slide, I will show you the general architecture of RHQ. It basically is a hub and spoke architecture where you have a cluster or cluster or a server or cluster of servers mm -hmm. at the central node. And you, on each managed platform, which is denoted by the dashed line, you have an agent running, which in the, um, gets all the plugins. And these plugins talk to the managed objects. On the server, you have the administrator connecting to the server. The default interface is the browser, so we have a rich UI that you will see later on. Since the last version, since the last release, we also have a command line interface and we have experimental support for web dev. So you can mount your resource tree as explorer um, folders. Also on the server, you have the, the central database. Currently we support Postgres and Oracle by default. We have embedded um, support for an embedded H2 database that's for demoing purposes or testing purposes so that you don't need to set up the whole um, big database solution. And there's also some experimental support for um, SQL Server. We will probably add some exper experimental support for MySQL in the future because this has been asked a lot, but no one has done it so far. You are free to participate. Also on the server, we have the alert sending. When you, when you run into a bad condition, you want to send an alert to an operator. This is by default done via email or SNMP traps. And in an experimental branch, we have also support via Twitter-like feeds to Twitter or Laconica, or via telephone call via the MobiSend solution from JBoss. This is actually pretty cool because when the alert ha happens, you get a call on your phone, it reads out the alert conditions to you, and you can even react to that via touch tones. So, okay, now I'm talking about what a managed resource is. This is the central concept in RHQ. So everything that you want to monitor or manage is a resource. This can be something like a CPU or a data source or a disk, but can also be more abstract like a Twitter timeline where you say, okay, I want to know how many posts or tweets are done per minute, for example. Um, a resource always has something with it, which is called uh, a resource type. So each resource has a type. This could be a Linux host or an Apache web server or a JBoss AS. And this type is defined by the plugin that you write. And last but not least, we have the resource category. This helps to determine the place of the resource in your inventory and inventory tree. The inventory is organized in a tree-like fashion or even yeah, in a forest-like um, fashion with many trees. And we have three categories in there, which is platform, that's the, that's the machine stuff is running on, and then server for things like a JBoss AS, and service for things like a single data source. 
those um, categories are sort of recurs recursive, meaning a server can contain another server. So JBoss has, for example, embedded Tomcat. Tomcat is a server type, so this is recursive. Um, when writing a plugin, there is no clear distinction when to use what. That's always a, a thing of a feeling, how, how you think uh, things are lining up best. So um, one rule of thumb that I um, use is when you want to model a subsystem like a message broker, this is a server resource and all those topics and queues on the message broker are services below it. That's just to get an idea on how to do that. Okay, now we're coming to the anatomy of a plugin. A plugin consists of three parts. The first part is a discovery component. It's a Java class that's basically responsible to find the resource or resources that you want to monitor and manage. We will later see how to write that. The second part is a so-called resource component. That's the guy that's doing all the work later on. So when you have your resource in inventory, when it's discovered, and you want to monitor or manage or whatever, it's always the resource component doing the work. This work is actually done in the so-called facets. So for various subsystems within RHQ, we have facets that support this um, action. So we have for measurement, the measurement fa uh, facet, for operations, the operations facet, create resource content, and a few more of those. And depending on what you want to do with the resource, you implement them or don't. And the last part of a plugin is the so-called plugin descriptor. This is basically wiring the classes together and defining the metadata for the system so that it actually knows that we want to monitor something. And for the facets and the, the metadata, they, they go hand in hand. So for measurement, we have the metric um, tag in the deployment descriptor, or for operations facet, the operations um, the tag, and so on. OK, now for the demo that I'm going to show in, in a minute. Um, basically, what I'm going to do is an HTTP ping for a remote Apache web server to see how long does it take to, uh, to talk to this one. Um, this can then be monitored and graphed in the UI and you can put an alert on when this is taking more than a second to, to respond because then you have, have run in a bad condition, sort of. So this is very simple and I'm going to use a hard-coded URL, so no fancy plugin configuration, no nothing, just to get you going quickly here. And at the bottom of the slide you see the setup. Our RHQ server is in blue with the agent in green. This is actually an embedded one, but it doesn't really matter. And there we deploy our plugin, which is talking to the Apache on port 10,080. OK, this will, the demo will consist of five parts, sort of. First is run the so-called plugin skeleton generator. That's a Java jar file that you run on the command line. It will ask you some questions. And when, when you, we are through that, it will create all the skeletons, all the artifacts that you need for a plugin, like the Maven POM file, the plugin descriptor stopped out one, all the Java classes and directories stopped out. So you can directly compile that, deploy it. It won't work, but it is already a plugin. Next is we will code up the missing pieces, so fill them in and compile them, and then we have a thing called standalone container. This is um, sort of an internal part of the agent that we start through a special command line interface that helps you to quickly test this, this agent functionality. And when we are happy with that, uh, we will end the last time, um, in the last part, um, deploy the plugin to the real um, RHQ server through the GUI and see in the GUI the, the metrics coming up.